been giving some thought to this. Do I have the courage to heal leprosy? What about you? Do you have the courage to heal leprosy? I mean, we've got it. That seems to be the theme this morning. We've got two stories about it. And I thought about this, and I thought, well, I could do the Elisha method. You know, call in the prescription. Not even go out and see the guy. You know, call it in. You just go down there, dip seven times, you're done. But with Jesus, oh, that's a different story. Now, on Thursday when we were in lectionary lunch, I mentioned that what we have to do first is get the unicorns and rainbows out of the way. Because that's the version we've got in the New Revised Standard uh, translation. Oh, Jesus was moved with pity. I do choose. Don't think that's quite the way that gospel goes when you're faithful to the Greek. So we consulted the infamous Funky Bible, which is by Robert W. Funk and Roy Hoover, and the Jesus Seminar, which strikes fear in the hearts of Orthodox Christians everywhere. And... This is the way this gospel reads. I'll just read the whole thing since it's short. Then a leper comes up to him, pleads with him, falls down on his knees and says to him, if you want to, you can make me clean. Although Jesus was indignant, he stretched out his hand, touched him and says to him, okay, you're clean. And right away the leprosy disappeared and he was made clean. And Jesus snapped at him and dismissed him curtly with this warning. See that you don't tell anyone anything, but go, have a priest examine your skin, then offer your cleansing, then offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded as evidence of your cure. But after he went out, he started telling everyone and spreading the story so that Jesus could no longer enter a city openly but had to stay out in the countryside. Yet they continued to come to him from everywhere. Was that a little bit different? You know, the thing about indignant and snapping, you know, that made me think, well, what did Jesus have against this poor guy that had leprosy? Uh, the way that one reads, it's like, man, he's unloading on this guy because he wants to be healed. And Another way that that Greek can be translated, a leper comes up to him and says, I, you can cleanse me if you dare. If you dare. See, there's something else going on here. It's not just the disease of leprosy that Jesus is pushed into addressing by this leper. The leper had probably already been to the priest. <coughs> He's a nobody. They don't want to deal with him, so they send him away. And Jesus commits two felonies. First of all, he takes upon himself the role of a priest. The guy comes to him for cleansing. And secondly, he touches the man. You do not touch a leper. And with this, Jesus is turning the social order up on its head. See, it's not just a story of healing. It's a revolutionary story. Jesus is starting a revolution here. He's going to the heart of one of the power structures, that of the priesthood. And he's going to undermine their authority. Now, when we read the lesson from Mark, it sounds like, oh, everybody thought Jesus is all of a sudden a really popular guy. And he's so popular, he can't even go into a city. He can't go into a city because he's done something. He's touched a leper. Everybody knows that. He can't go into a city because he's unclean. So now, you understand why I have the courage to heal leprosy in the method of Elisha. And are you getting nervous about the implication of this gospel? Because Jesus speaks truth to power. And we know how that turns out. Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King, Mountain X. 
among others. See, we're not called as Christians to call in prescriptions for the world's ills. As Christians, we're God's antibiotic for leprosy. And that's how leprosy is cured today. Take an antibiotic, it's a bacterial infection. We are the cure for things like poverty. We are the cure for homelessness. We are the cure for those who aren't clothed, for those who can't receive medical care because the high priest of our medical system says to them, you're not worth it. By Christ, we say every human being is worth it. And we swallow hard on that indignancy of being pushed into the position of speaking truth to power. Put it out there again. Do you have the courage to heal leprosy? Think about it where it crops up in your daily life. It's not always on a grand scale. Sometimes it's on a small scale. It's within families. It's within businesses. Sometimes it's within churches. Do you have the courage, do I, to be God's antibiotic?